The San Jose Sharks acquired Jack Studnika. Anthony Duclair gets benched. The power play is improving, plus a Barracuda checked in. So all that and more in a jam-packed episode of Locked on Sharks. Your Locked on Sharks, your daily podcast on the San Jose Sharks. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, welcome to Locked on Sharks, the premier hockey podcast covering your favorite team in the Bay Area. My name is J.D. Young, contributor at San Jose Hockey Now. I want to thank you for making Locked on Sharks your first listen, probably part of the Locked on Network. We cover your team every day, and if you want to be an everydayer, all you have to do is just follow on wherever you get podcasts, or you can watch on YouTube as well. And first, I want to start out by saying uh, I apologize to all the people who like to listen right after. As you guys know, any longtime listener of Locked on Sharks knows, um, I like to record right after the game so we can kind of have a fresh, uh, you know, approach to it. Um, under the weather last night kind of hit me in the second period. By the third period, I was done. Um, so I apologize. You're getting actually a 6.30 a.m. Uh, pre-caffeinated version of Locked on Sharks this morning where we're going to kind of, kind of hit the big points uh, that kind of the big storylines that came out of the weekend, right? Jack Sudnika acquired uh, Anthony Duclair bench and kind of my impression of the power play, which has really, really improved. Uh, and then my thoughts on the uh, Barracuda and watching Shakir Mukumadulin this weekend. So a lot of stuff to get into. So before we get into all that, do want to let you guys know that today's episode is brought to you guys by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NHL for twenty dollars off your first purchase. So let's get started with Jack Studnika, who the Sharks acquired. On Friday for Nick Chichek and a 2024 sixth round pick. And a lot of people were a little confused on why you would trade for a player who was literally on waivers uh, or like in November. And I get the confusion. Um, but I think the big thing that you can take away from the Studnika trade is the Sharks are worried about Nico Sturm for a while. Um, Sturm who jammed his wrist, sprained his wrist, whoever, something did something. To his wrist um he's been at practice but without a stick and that's very that's because they don't want him to continue to and he wants to continue to be able to kind of skate and do all that stuff but worried about his hand and wrist um so if you look at where the sharks are especially at their center depth they have logan Gator out right um you have ryan carpenter out who was kind of supposed to be your fifth uh centerman then you have nico Sturm. so you have Basically, three out of your top five centermen who are NHL caliber centermen who are out, and they don't really have a lot on the Barracuda right now. Um, remember, Thomas Bordalo, the organization does not view him as a center anymore. He is going to be a wing. That is, he's been playing on the wing basically since he got back to the Barracuda. Um, he's no longer a center option. Um, Tristan Robbins still hasn't played at all this year. And then that leaves you Jacob Peterson, Nathan Todd, who are on NHL contracts right now uh, to play. You could play a potential center. Um, again, not a lot of depth there. So I think you're, you're basically, you're acquiring a guy in Jake Studnika, who's was a second round pick, you know, and it's kind of bounced around, hasn't been able to establish himself um, and hopes that he can kind of just solidify the position and give you some much needed depth. And then when you start to get guys back, you can send them down to the Barracuda and he'll be a really nice piece for the Barracuda if he need uh, if he needs to be down there as well. So um, a lot of people, though, did ask, like, why didn't you just grab him on waivers? Remember, the Sharks are at 49 out of 50 contracts. So this gives them some flexibility to maybe add another piece later if, if a good piece becomes on waivers. And then also at the trade deadline, right? You want to have a little bit of flexibility in case you need to take on an extra contract as you're sending contracts out, uh, whatever it may be. Uh, so, and you got the better player between Jake's, uh, Jack Sudnika. I don't know. I keep saying Jake, Jack Sudnika and uh, Nick Chichek. Uh, Sudnika is a better player. And as much as I like Nick Chichek, he's, gotten past in the organization right you look at the recent additions defensively um leon gavanke he's above him right um shakir mcmadillon he's above him 
Um, you know, you guys still have guys like Nikolai Knizhov or Dean Shimmick floating around. Um, even some of the additions, you know, Henry Thrun's passed him. Uh, like you, there's just more players in front of him, and he's probably wasn't going to get a chance to play NHL minutes um, for the Sharks anytime soon. So, you know, I root for Chichek. He's a great guy to talk, you know, to talk to and get to know. Um, you know, I hope he I hope he gets a chance in Vancouver, but there's just too many bodies in front of him right now, too many people in front of him. So, um, you know, for Sudnika, this is a chance for him to kind of solidify himself much like you know some of the other guys that, that the sharks have kind of taken you know swings on right um phil sedina who's you know hasn't really worked out too much this year you know mikey acmon who was a you know a nice piece for the sharks last year and you know ended up getting uh a, you know end up getting a nice trade out of him um like guys like that where you're just kind of trying to unearth somebody and see if you can find somebody who can help out your team um short term and long term. So um yeah, I'm I'm perfectly fine with that. And a six round pick is whatever. Um you less than 10% of six round picks play 100 NHL games. So um you're fine with that giving up a six round pick. It's also really early in the morning right now. So if you hear the garbage truck, I apologize right now. That is again, it is 6 30 a.m. right now and I'm recording. So if you hear the garbage truck, I apologize right now. So um next big news um as these sharks you know had a rough weekend losing, uh, scoring two goals and still losing zero to one against the Coyotes and then six to two against the Avalanche. Um, but uh, you know, the big news coming out Anthony Duclair getting benched, um, for Sunday night's game against the Avalanche, and a bit of a surprise is you know, I know the offsides goal and uh, David Quinn did say it wasn't just the offsides goal that kind of was the reason, but um, I think this is one of those like tone setting messages for maybe for everybody in the organization right like oh if anthony duclair can get benched i can get benched too so i need to watch my kind of my my p's and q's and all my details and all and stuff like that so um maybe you know i'm sure quinn talked to duclair and i expect duclair to kind of come out and um have a great game on, on Tuesday against the Kings. You know, I, I, I don't expect this to be a long-term Anthony Duclair get bench, especially after he lost six to two. If, if the Sharks have won, you know, a bunch, if they'd won six to two against the Avs and we're talking about, Oh my gosh, the Sharks team might be real. Um, then that would be another question about Duclair. But I, th I think though with, with Duclair, it was probably a, you need to work on some of your small things, you know, work on some of your details. Maybe you're not winning enough board battles, not enough hustle, um, all that type of stuff that coach speak that coaches love to, you know, and I'm sure Duclair being a leader and a captain or not a captain, but a leader on this team and, you know, kind of really taking the, the young guys under his wing, you know, can kind of be an example for himself of like, look guys, if, if I can get benched, I, you know, I've played a bajillion games in the NHL. Um, I'm a former 30 goal scorer. Like, if I can get benched, you can get benched too. That's how quickly things can happen here in the NHL. So I, I wouldn't be surprised if it was kind of a little wink of a nod uh, agreement for between the two of them. Be again, I know Duclair wants to play, but um, but using as a learning experience for everybody on the team, especially with so many young players that look, it can be, you know, it, it doesn't matter who you are. You can be a guy who can get benched because, and you know, you need to earn your playing time uh, going forward. So not worried about Duclair. I think Duclair, I wouldn't be surprised if Duclair bounces back and has a big game on this week, uh, sometime this week, you know, when they play, um, they play the Kings uh, on Tuesday. And like I said, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got has a monster game against the Kings, especially when we get that, that Duclair, the way that Duclair, Zetterlin, Granlin line's been playing. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if we get, if we get a, a big Duclair game uh, coming up. So um, before we continue, we'll keep kind of digging into some of the big storylines uh, coming out of the weekend. Uh, we'll talk about the power play and talk about the Barracuda. Uh, do all that here in just one second. If you are looking for that last minute gift like me, maybe you're a bit of a procrastinator um, and you have someone in your life who loves going to sports, movies, uh, music, theater, comedies, whatever game time is the way to go because they have killer last minute deals all in prices views from your seat and their best price guaranteed game time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets you can buy tickets last minute even up to 
an hour after it starts and still find amazing deals on last minute seats. They have exclusive flash deals and sponsored deals on tickets for football. Um, so if you want to go catch a Niners game, go catch a Warriors game, uh, maybe go get a gift for a Giants game. You want to go see uh, Lee next year, uh, concerts, whatever. Game time has got you covered. And the thing I love about game time is you can see your seats before you buy the tickets because there's nothing worse than buying uh, tickets and realizing you have bad seats. Actually, the only thing worse is buying tickets and you get slammed with a bunch of fees because game time, they don't do that. They have all your fees Um Included in the price, you're not you know exactly what you're going to pay when you go to check out. So, download the game time out, create an account, and use code locked on NHL for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply again, create an account, redeem code locked on NHL, L O C K E D O N NHL for $20 off. Download game time, last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. All right, uh, as we continue, again, thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Probably a part of Locked On Network where we could cover your team every day. Um, one thing I, I think that's really kind of improved and kind of a big storyline for the Sharks, especially since the the good vibe Sharks have been back, um, is the power play. Um, they don't get... They don't get a lot of chances, but the power play, when it does get an opportunity, it has been an absolute weapon uh, for the Sharks. They had an, two more power play goals on Sunday against the Avs. And the thing that's crazy about the power play, so if you're kind of a little bit of butter knife in it, kind of picking and choosing, but if you go from November 7th, which is when the Sharks won their first game, right? Um, if you throw out the 0-10-1, and you know, the 11-game losing streak, kind of throw that away and just look at – since the Sharks have actually been a real NHL team now, the Sharks power play is 11th in the NHL during that time at 22.4%. Again, they don't get a lot of power play opportunities. Um, if at 49 in that time, in that, uh, which isn't, again, not the worst. Um, it is third least uh, with only the Maple Leafs and Kings having less. Uh, granted, they played four less games in that time. But the Sharks power play, though, is again 11th and operating at 22.4 percent uh which is not too bad um looking again if you're kind of take that number look at where where the sharks would be at just again at 22.4 percent um for they that would actually put them at um 22.4 percent again kind of uh 12th in the nhl right now so this power play has actually become really good and and over that time. I think you can kind of again point to the addition of Mikel Granlin, who I think now that he's healthy and fully, you know, by that time kind of healthy, fully integrated into the the system. Um and we've seen now recently, uh Dakota says hi if you're watching on YouTube. Uh we've now seen recently that uh he is, you know, they have gone back to the five forward chaos unit uh with Mikel Granlin uh kind of running things at the point um and then with Addison as the second unit uh you know Kael Addison running the second unit at the point but Granlin's ability to kind of you know know kind of find the right uh shot or find the right player or make the right pass and we've seen that time and time again even maybe not on the power play but even in, in the you know six on five situations that the sharks have become really good at it's because of Mikel granlin right uh think about you know the the game in vegas the the, the tomas hurdle game tying goal right uh Mikel granlin fires a shot pass that kind of goes off the boards and banks right in front of Tomas Hurdle where he's able to kind of to bank at home, uh, you know, and, and pot at home and, and score the game time goal. Um, Granlin has become such a weapon, such an important piece for the Sharks right now. And you can see the improvement uh, with him and, and why this, he can reason why this power play has been so efficient, um, been able to kind of, you know, working working the point, finding Eklund, Eklund finding Hurdle, or getting Eklund a, a great slap shot. And then, you know, some of the other pieces around, you know, I think putting Zetterlin, who's a big, big body, uh, especially in the last, uh, against the Avs, right? You had Zetterlin kind of in that bumper position or right in front of that, that net front presence who is able to, you know, he's a very stocky dude. Um, it's hard to push him off the puck, and he can kind of bang home some of those ugly uh, goals right there. 
like all the pieces just kind of make sense for the Sharks right now uh, with the way the power play is running. And, you know, if you go back way, way beginning of the season, you know, kind of talked about what, you know, how this team could really improve. The power play was a big reason, right? It, the the whole like be scrappy five on five kind of hang in there and then have your special teams take, you know, really kind of take things, you know, be be the the the, the difference maker, right? And the penalty kill has been okay and it's been kind of getting a little bit better here. Um, you know, if you look at kind of the same that same range of November 7th. You know, the penalty kills at like 77%, which is 21st in the league, which again, not the greatest um, and is a big step back from what we saw last year, um, you know, with this penalty kill being a top 10 unit. And I think the penalty kill will continue to kind of get better as you have guys um, continue to get used to it. Right. And a lot of these guys are in new roles this year with, with the penalty kill. But um, I think, though, being good on the special teams, kind of hanging there five on five is kind of been the Sharks recipe for success. And, you know, it's been working for the most part. And yes, they've been getting lucky with the, you know, kind of some scrappy wins and some come from behind wins and stuff. But, you know, they've been taking advantage of the, those power again, not getting a lot of power play opportunities. But when they get them, they have been taking advantage of them. So um, I think that that's a huge step for the Sharks going forward. Right. And if you look, if you remember way back when I, um, you know, kind of did my David Quinn deep dive going you know when he got hired um talked about how much the power play improved for the rangers right from year one which was i think kind of a bottom 10 unit to year two which was a top 10 unit and kind of that being their key to success was you know we'll be okay at 5v5 but when it comes to the special teams that's going to be kind of our bread and butter and you can you can see that formula you know working for the most part for the sharks i think the power the penalty kill Still has some work to do. I think that when you get Nico Stern back and when Logan Couture comes back, those are going to be huge boosts to the, the penalty kill. And then right now you're getting guys like Wayne Macron getting penalty kill time. zedlin has been getting penalty kill time. Luke Cunn has become a pretty solid penalty killer. Um, you're getting, you know, Zadina has been getting penalty. Like you're getting some of these guys who are getting um, some opportunity to kind of learn on the fly with it and then use those, you know, to kind of later on to pair those guys with your established penalty killers, right? Um a Zetterlin Couture penalty kill sounds amazing to me, right? Especially with Couture's ability to kill. Um, and then having a guy like Zetterlin who can kind of bust one uh, quickly. And, you know, we, we've seen Zetterlin get out there and, and kind of get some breakaway chances. So, um, like, that that sounds amazing to me where you can then turn the penalty kill into an actual, like, potential weapon and, and maybe that power kill that we so desperately would love to see um, someday. So, Again, 5v5 is still going to take some some work, and it's very much a you know top six lead right now that that Grandland hurdle line are, are doing a lot of heavy lifting for the Sharks, especially with Sturm and Couture and Carpenter out, and they're kind of having to piece together the bottom six. But um, if you can hang in there 5v5 and your power play continues to play the way that it's playing, you know, the Sharks are going to continue to be this kind of scrappy, good vibe Sharks uh, right now. And, you know, they got big, they got a big test on, um, on, against the Kings on, on Tuesday. And I'm very interested to see how the Sharks, you know, kind of respond to this weekend, which I think was a little bit deflating, you know, losing, Oh, you know, losing one, nothing to the Coyotes, even though you scored two goals, uh, having them both getting waved off, both deservingly waved off. Right. Um, we've seen, we've seen that the Eklund goal, we've seen that same exact goal waved off with Zettelin kind of doing the same thing. Cunning did this time. Um, you know, and Duclair was was offsides. It's just those those things happen, unfortunately. And then, you know, you kind of got uh, the the you kind of got into a, put into a bad spot against the the Avs. You know, going on a five minute penalty kill, uh, three minutes into the game, and just were kind of playing catch up the entire game and weren't able to really establish yourself. So I think the, you kind of just wipe the slate clean. You look forward to this this uh, Kings game, which has been you know the Sharks have been playing really well at home recently. So. Um, I think this is a, an opportunity for them to reset and kind of get those good vibes back. So, um, look, it's going to be a good game on Tuesday. I'm really excited about it. So, um, before we continue, we're going to talk about the Barracudas weekend, who had a, a Barracuda had a great weekend this weekend. Um, talk about Shakir Mukudulin, talk about the Teddy Bear Toss. So, all that here in just one second. 
As the weather gets colder, the NFL stays hot on FanDuel. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 money line bet. Say $150 if your team wins. So if you've been thinking about joining FanDuel, there's no better time to get in on the action. There's an app is super easy to use. There's a wide range of betting options, including spreads, player props, over-unders, and more. Um, player props, Christian McCaffrey was scoring a touchdown, guys. Like... It's free money at this point. He just keeps doing it. Um, or Raheem Mostert scoring a touchdown. Um, Raheem Mostert scored more touchdowns than Christian McCaffrey. So um, you could even put those two together and think Raheem Mostert touchdown, Christian McCaffrey, Christian McCaffrey scoring a touchdown. Um, that sounds like a nice little parlay to me. So visit FanDuel.com slash locked on and kick off the NFL season. FanDuel, official partner of the N. F L. All right. Uh, we are back again. Thank you guys for making Locked On Sharks your first listen. Probably part of the Locked On Network. We cover your team every day. And today we're going to be kind of checking in right now, checking on the Barracuda. So, um, first things first, if you have not been to a Teddy Bear Toss game of any sort, you need to go. Um, it's been on my bucket list to do, and it is one of the most fun experiences um, that you will have, right? First of all, like seeing everybody bringing in like just bags of bears and stuff like that. Um, you can bring more than one bear. And I kind of wish I'd brought more, more than one bear. We brought enough bear. We brought a bear for, so it was me, uh, my family, and then my friend and everyone brought one bear for themselves. And I wish we had brought more, but um, first things first though. Go go next year, make it a point, whether it's if you're have a you know a major junior team, your local team, Barracuda, whatever, go to a teddy bear toss game. It is so much fun. Um, just the anticipation of like um that first goal, like any time the puck is like anywhere near the the you know in the offensive zone, you feel like there's there's a vibe to it. So um teddy bear toss game, super fun. Goes to a great cause. I know the the bear could have you know um, had over three thousand bears that they're going to you know donate to a, a you know kids in need right now. You know kids are in the hospital, um, whatever it you know like it's it's a great cause and just it's what it's one of the best traditions in sports. Like that teddy bear toss game, so much fun. Um, and congrats, to Ethan Cardwell, uh, friend of the podcast, Ethan Cardwell. You could kind of, I, I thought it was gonna be Gushin, but once the game got going, like Cardwell had a, uh, a couple good chances. And, um, so congrats, to Ethan Cardwell, go to a teddy bear toss game. I promise you, uh, it's a blast. So, so much fun, but, um, Barracuda big weekend, uh, sweeping the Calgary Wranglers and you're starting to kind of see this team maybe come together a little bit, right? You got. Uh, Ichi Makanemi, who had a shutout on um, on Friday night, which is good, right? Makanemi has been really, you know, still kind of working his way back from his injuries. Um, good to see Makanemi this weekend get that shutout, and I think really kind of put his name back into the, you know, with with this goaltending battle that this three headed goaltending monster that they've had. So um, I thought Magnus Krona played really well again on on Saturday night, but. The guy I was watching was Shakir Mukamadulan, right? And this was kind of the first time I've gotten to watch him in person and really impressed with one, his size, uh, of course, right? You, you, that's the first thing you notice, but um, watching him skate and how smooth he is and just, it's almost effortless just how he can kind of get from one place to another uh, without having to do much. And that's, again, you know, with, with these big guys, um, we know they can cover ground really easily, right? Brent Burns, right, could, you know, noted big defenseman who can kind of get from one side of the rink to the other without having to do much. I'm not saying Shakir McMadolin is going to turn into Brent Burns, but just that kind of comp of, like, I, if I need to kind of get from here to there, I can do that really quickly. But he does it so smooth and effortlessly in his skating, and I was really impressed with just his ability, you know, it's all several times in the defensive zone of, like, you know, getting the puck out, and boom, I got to make that quick move and um, almost that like Eklund esque, like quick shift. And I'm, you know, going, you know, going one way, boom, I'm going the other way. And again, six foot four. Um, but I, I, he's so little, you know, needs to continue to work on the kind of the details of playing defense, right? They didn't have, and, you know, in the KHL, it's just a much different game, right? Um, there. And that's, uh, that's something I think beginning of the season where he, I think he was really, really focused on those 
defensive details and you weren't really kind of seeing the production. Now you're starting to marry those two together, right? Um, he had a goal and an assist on Friday night. I think he had two assists, if I recall correctly, on Saturday night. So you're starting to see that production now start to come with the, you know, his defensive game. And I think getting them the right partner. He's been playing with Leon Kivanke in, in so far in the AHL. And um, while that partnership at the beginning was a little bit rocky, you're starting to see that that line, that kind of defensive pair come together here um, so far. But, you know, this is a big weekend for the Barracuda to kind of beat this Calgary Wranglers team that has, has been, you know, near the top or at the top of the Pacific Division for most of the season. So um, I know they don't have Dustin Wolf, but, you know, they, that's still a very good uh, Wranglers team right now. And um, this could be the kind of that spark for the, the, the Barracuda as they try to kind of make that playoff push right now. Um, you know, they've got some games against Henderson coming up, uh, I think, next weekend. Like this, this is a this is the go time for the Barracuda, and you know Bordalo I think has been playing really well on the wing. Um, you know Daniel Gushin that continues to produce. Uh, you know uh, he was the uh, the third star, and then you're getting contributions from your kind of veteran guys that like, you know Nathan Todd, um, Cole Castles. Like those kind of guys are like the team's starting to kind of come together right now, and I, I think um, I think they're going to start to play some of their best hockey here going forward. So. Um, Hopefully they can, you know, kind of build on this and we don't see the this, you know, win one, lose one, win one, lose one. That the scene really needs to kind of go on a uh, you know, on a streak here, maybe four out of five, five out of six, or uh type of deal as they try to climb them the climb out of the hole that they've dug here. But um Shakir McMahon really, really impressed with him. I think, you know, I, I he will make his NHL debut at some point this season. I know they have the tricks of a thousand defensemen right now, but um He's yeah, I, I he'll make his NHL debut and I think he's going to be uh, an, an NHL or next year at some point uh, going forward because I you 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 can see where the, the kind of the special traits out of out of him and what he's going to be again still needs to, some of the, the, the finer points of his defense is still need to be worked on. But I think finding him the right partner going forward, um, I, I'm really excited about kind of. Mukuma uh projection and where he's going to end up with the Sharks. So um, that's going to be it for me today. Again, it's like 7 a.m. now. Um, thank you guys for making Locked on Sharks your first listen. Be back tomorrow at San Jose Barracuda forward. Jacob Peterson um, joins the show. Really fun to chat with him. Really great guy, PD. Um, yeah, good chat with him. So uh, make sure you guys are following along for that. Um, of course, you can follow the show wherever you get podcasts and watch on YouTube as well. Um, you can also follow the show on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram at Locked on Sharks. You can follow me on Twitter at my fry hole. And until tomorrow, bye, friends. <laughs>